Welcome to video two in a introductory video series from SolidCAM. In this video, we'll be talking about tool table setup. So the tool table is the list of tools you're going to use in your part file. You actually either set them up in the part file as you go along, or you can set them up as a global library that can be used in any part file. So we're gonna go through that real quick. First thing, we go to tools, SolidCAM, tool library. And let's create a library for the mill turn module. This just basically will allow us to either make mill tools or turning tools. If I chose just milling or just turning, then that library would only have the ability to create those types of tools. So let's go to mill turn. And the first window we get here is just asking us for the name of the tool table. In this case, I'll just call it test. If I relate it to a machine, it just means that that will be defaulted to the post. So if I choose that post, this will be the first tool table that pops up. The save location is the same location that was uh, called out in um, the global settings, which we saw in video one. So if I just click OK, we'll see now we're looking at the tool library. So let's just quickly add a tool. We'll add a milling tool. From here, you'll see the basic shapes that you can choose from. I'm just going to choose a flat end mill. In the flat end mill, I can define my diameter, my arbor diameter, overall length, how far it's sitting outside the holder, number of flutes, cutting length, pretty much anything to best represent this tool inside the part file. I can add fees and speeds information in the tool data section. Keep in mind that these are just defaults. These are defaults that you defined, again, back in the global settings we saw in video one. We can actually tell it that every new tool has a certain set of fees and speeds. These are not related to material, not related to the machine, not related to the tool shape at all. These are just the values you plug in here for that every time you choose this tool for an operation, it just automatically auto-populates with whatever fees and speed you put in this menu. I can add a holder right here. So let's say we were using a quarter inch tool. I would just go here, check the box. And then if I take a look at the tool picture, it adds that holder to my tool definition. If I want to choke that up in the holder a little more, that's just the outside the holder length. Let me change that to an inch and a half. You'll see that it gets further inside the holder. So all you're doing in this window is just defining the tool for use in the toolpath. In the global library, there's really nothing relating to a toolpath yet. We're just defining just purely the definitions of the tool. If I were to create a turning tool, we can see here that we have two types of turning tools. We have the composite tools and we have the solid tools. Very simple difference is the composite tools we define the insert. So you can see here, here's the name of the insert. I can go through the tables and create a very common insert. So let me just make a CNMG. Again, I'm just grabbing from the tables. You can see the name is starting to auto-populate there. So if I make a, a four, three, two, I've defined my insert. And then in the shank tab, I just define the dimensions of the shank. So um, clamping, the shape would, was grabbed from the insert definition. We have the lead angle. Everything else related to the tool, pad, the tool is here. So again, you'll define your tools here as a global library. And then when you open up your part file, you would import from the global library into your active tool library. So let's take a look at what that actually means. So I'm just going to exit out of here. I'm not going to save this library. And I'm going to open up a recent CAM part just so we can see what you do on the part side. So the global libraries are just the definitions of the tools. They have no mounting directions. They only have default speeds and speeds and default uh, dimensions. Once you actually get into the part file, in the left menu, you'll double click on tool and you'll see all the tools that you defined previously. So in this case, uh, these were the tools I defined while I was working on this part. But if I wanted to add more tools, again, I just go to the bottom left here and choose add milling tool, choose the type of tool, and then give it further dimensions. But once I've defined that, these tools only exist in this part file. They only exist as active tool library tools, meaning that they're only for the active tool use, the, act, the, the part file we're looking at. With that global library I defined, let's say I went ahead and defined all the tools I have in my shop, and now I want to add them to this individual part file. I can go to Import Tools, 
and I can grab from one of my libraries. So these are all the libraries that I have, but SolidCam comes with default libraries. Uh, that would be the general library, the face mills, the center drills, and then these two libraries here, the SolidCam master tool list for aluminum and the SolidCam master tool list for mild steel. So this list actually has thousands of tools on here. If I want to filter this global library to show me just the tools that I'm looking for, I can go to these black triangles and to filter for each category. So in this case, user definition, if I click on that black triangle, I'm only looking for a flat end mill. So I'll say clear all and say flat end mill. So that filters the list to only show me the flat end mills. If I'm looking for a half inch, either I can click on diameter and actually put them in increasing or decreasing order, or I can say flat triangle and show me only the tools on the, this list that fall between the half inch and let's say 499. So with two filters there, the only tool on this list that falls in that category of being a flat end mill but has a half inch diameter is this guy right here. So I can click on that one. And when I'm importing from a global library, I can either import all the tools using the blue arrow or just the individual tool that I've selected there with the white arrow. The blue arrow would be for a tool library that has all the tools I intend to use. So let's say on my Haas, it has a carousel of 20 tools. I only want to just grab those 20 tools because I intend to use almost all of them. I can import the entire tool library with the blue arrow. In the case of the solid cam master list, I probably don't want to import all thousands of tools. I just want this one tool. So I'll click on the white arrow. And then when I get back to my active tool library, I can see that tool 18 was now added with the predefined definitions and the fees and speeds that came with it. So you define the tools on the global side ahead of time so that when you get into your part file, you don't have to think about it. You can define the tools um, for just aluminum, just steel, the tools that are currently loaded onto machines. So you can name your tool libraries per the machine, or you can relate them using the, the, the post, and you can say, I'm about to work on machine one. It has these same 20 tools every time. I'll just grab that tool list, and I know all the tools I have access to. Any questions of this or anything else from Solid Game, you can always give us a call at 1-866-975-1115, extension 2, or you can send us your parts or your questions via the ticket system at solidcamsupport.com. Stay tuned for the rest of the videos in this video series. Thanks for watching.